What's going on guys? Welcome back into the channel. Today I have an exciting video for you guys that liked the last five tips for fantasy drafts in Madden 21. Today we're going to be covering five more tips for you for fantasy drafts in Madden 21 that are going to help you build a better team and have long-term success in a fantasy draft. Now these five tips pretty much build upon the last five tips and there are additional things that are just as important as the first five tips. Let's jump into the first one today. The first tip that I want to give you in this video is to draft players that you know you can use. Focus on players that you know you can use. Maybe it's a player that you've used in the past that you know or you're good with, or maybe there's a specific team that you're very familiar with. Maybe you're like me, you run a lot of Pittsburgh Steelers franchises, and so you tend to draft Pittsburgh Steelers players that you know you can utilize and you know you've had success with in the past. So for me, for example, on the offense side of the ball. I've used Deontay Johnson before. I've had a lot of success with him. I've used Austin Eckler as a uh, Chargers fan, as, as kind of my second favorite team. I've used Brian O'Neill as a pit player because I always like to bring hometown kids into my team. So I've played with Brian O'Neill quite a bit. On the defensive side of the ball, nothing can be said more so than Tremaine, or sorry, Terrell Edmonds. Terrell Edmonds is the strong safety for the Pittsburgh Steeler and a player that I always turn into an absolute beast. It Madden and the reason that I selected him over some of the other safeties that are available is simply because I know that I can use him I know that I can turn him into a very valuable player and he aligns pretty closely to what I'm trying to do at that specific position so like I said, draft guys that you know you can use, whether that be somebody that you've utilized in the past, somebody you're familiar with, or somebody that has stats that work for you. So Terrell Edmonds is a guy like that. It, honestly, a lot of the players that you'll see on my team are players that I've used, whether it be last year or this year, I've used on multiple occasions and had a lot of success with. Uh, Terrell and Tremaine Edmonds are a duo that I've used quite a bit. I uh, always had success with Jackson, uh, both of the Jacksons, Isaiah Oliver, Dexter Lawrence. A lot of these guys that you'll see on my team might be a little bit lower overall than you expect, but that's because I'm drafting my guys. I'm drafting guys that are specifically useful to me. I know how they play, and I know how to get the most out of them, whether that be through stats or through development or through gameplay, whatever it might be. I can get the most out of them because these are guys I'm familiar with rather than learning new players. Now, the next uh, topic that I want to talk about, the next tip, tip number two for today, is prioritize drafting positions of impact. Now, you know, we've obviously talked about this in some aspects with the first video, but I wanted to really hit on this point of drafting positions of impact. Now, why should you draft position of impact and what is a position of impact? So this could be different for any different team, but you want to prioritize drafting positions of impact that are going to be the most influential in your franchise. And this can be different depending on what your role sets are, what your slider sets are. Different positions can have different impacts. So probably the most important position that is impactful, the most impact position is going to be your pass rushers. So if you know, you're know you in a franchise that really depends on having good pass rushers to get pressure on an opposing quarterback, you should really focus on building a good pass rush squad because if you neglect impact positions you're not going to have long-term success in your franchises this one's pretty straightforward but it's important to note because your impact positions like i said are going to vary depending on the franchise so uh, some of the positions that i consider to be the most impactful like i said would be pass rushers as well as a user middle linebacker because if you if you are using a middle linebacker in your league you need to make sure you get one because the difference between somebody that has a effective user linebacker and somebody that has a slow linebacker is tremendously different that is one of the most impactful positions and something you should absolutely focus on so while you might be in the first round and all these quarterbacks are going this kind of reflects back to what we talked about before but while the quarterbacks might be going you might be saying hey look the most impactful position in our franchise is absolutely absolutely going to be the user middle linebacker why don't i focus on getting a player at the most impactful position and so this also leads me into saying don't focus on players at non-impactful positions and this is really where i wanted to go with this point is 
safeties. I mean, in most leagues, your safeties really don't get involved in the play all that much. Now, you might run a defense that gets your safeties involved, but for me personally, my free safety, my strong safety don't get involved all that much. And so this is why I draft low overall players at these positions, because generally speaking, the other positions are more impactful. They're more important. The free safety to me, it could be just about anyone. As long as they're somewhat athletic, I'll be fine, because a lot of times I just run this play in a deep blue zone and so they're less impactful than say a middle linebacker would be or a pass rusher would be so tip number two is to focus on the positions that are most impactful and that are going to drive how you play the game and uh, build around those players that is the most important thing you can do in terms of prioritizing which positions to pick players at the next one that I want to talk about is drafting better players and changing their positions as opposed to drafting a worse player at a position that you need. So a couple examples here that I want to give you guys, and I'm going to give them to you live. So oftentimes in a fantasy draft, left tackles go off the board quickly because that's a high value position. Don't focus on drafting a left tackle. You could very well draft a good player at another position and start them at left tackle. So I'm going to take, for example, uh, Elgin Jenkins here, and I'm just going to simply flip him over to left tackle because he can absolutely play at that position. Now, I would do a little bit more in-depth analysis to see who's the best pass blocker to maybe put at that left tackle spot. But real quick and easy, you can take that player and put him at left tackle. So instead of taking a lower overall or maybe an older left tackle and playing them at left tackle, why not draft this 80 overall star left guard and simply move him to left tackle to fill that void? Likewise, on defense here, I have a couple players. Instead of taking a a crappy outside linebacker, what I did was I drafted some young middle linebackers that I know I can use as a 4-3 outside linebacker, and I'm going to take them and switch them over to that right outside linebacker spot. They're going to go up in overall, and they're going to get uh, starting reps on the field and they might be even a better player than what I could have picked at right outside linebackers. So take a look here. I go to the defense. Harrison has now gone up to a 72. Whenever you compare that to what's available at that position, I got a steal there because I picked a guy at a different position that was available and I'm simply moving him over to that uh, that position to get the most effect. So I could have taken an older player that's probably not going to be as good out of this list of players, but instead I took somebody that was more athletic younger, has better chance to develop into a good player and move them to the position that I needed as opposed to taking a higher overall that's maybe not going to be as good, maybe older, something of that nature. Take a player and move them to the position that you need as opposed to reaching on a player that you're not going to necessarily need uh, or is not going to be as effective. As you guys saw with Jenkins, as you guys saw with the linebacker, you can do this at a lot of different positions. Likewise, I also drafted uh, Raekwon Davis here because he is a player that can play D-tackle. So I'm going to move him from a 71 overall right end to be my second D-tackle. So you guys will see here. I've now filled that D tackle spot as opposed to drafting a crappy defensive tackle. I've now taken a big old defensive end and switched him to that D tackle spot. So now he's going to play opposite of Fletcher Cox. This is a really important point because a lot of people are just going to look to fill that spot by drafting at that specific position. But if you know that you can switch players around from position to position effectively, this is going to help you guys out tremendously. The fourth tip that I need to talk about is don't be afraid to draft trade chips. So, you know, let's say I have pretty much my full lineup in right here, right now. But I see that there's somebody out there that has a lot of value. Maybe I should draft that player and consider trading them later on down the line, maybe during this season. Maybe I notice that everybody else is neglecting, for example, the tight end position, or everybody's neglecting a certain position. Well, there's nothing wrong with me going and drafting a couple of extra tight ends and trading them to needy teams that haven't drafted a tight end yet because they were too focused on other positions. That is one way that you can allow yourself to... uh, trade in a fantasy draft because like I said it's tough to trade in fantasy drafts especially with the CPU um, after the fantasy draft is done so if you want to be able to make some trades happen consider drafting trade chips this late into the draft once you have most of your key positions down and your starters selected go ahead and draft some trade chips and try to 
pawn them off on other teams that maybe are going to need that position. You know, maybe you noticed, and this goes back to my points from the previous video of paying attention to what other people are doing. Maybe you noticed that, you know, like me, there's some guy that's waiting on quarterbacks and hasn't drafted a quarterback yet. Try to spot who they might be targeting out of the players remaining at that position and take them and then force their hand into making a trade that is favorable for you of some or something of that nature that could really help you guys out remember you know once you have your starters your backups aren't going to be nearly as important unless you have some older players that you know they're going to move on and you might need to develop players behind them but like if you utilizing the strategies that I've given you, you're going to have a primarily young team. You're not going to need to focus on backups right away. It's not going to be urgent. So I would definitely scour what's out there and try to find trade chips. You know, at the safety spot, I, I traded or rather I drafted Julian Love kind of as an example of that, you know, a safety that's young that could develop into something. If somebody else has a safety go down with an injury or somebody just chose not to draft the safety and they're getting kind of garbage left over at this point this could be a trade chip for me there's various other players that could be a trade chip for me if I drafted them it's really important that you guys focus on that as well because that is a strategy for long-term success if you can build up success through trades getting favorable trades to go your way that could really help you guys out now the last tip that I have for you guys today may be one of the most important tips and that is utilize sorting to your advantage so whenever you go into your make selection screen here you can sort by a lot of different categories the most important is probably the development trait so you can sort very quickly and very easily and see which players have superstar x-factor development it's always going to put the highest development players at the top right now I don't believe we have uh, we have at least one star player left over two star players so that's all we have is two star players left over but in those uh, earlier rounds than this this can be a really effective trait to find young high development players that could help your team out very easily one of the tr one of the uh, attributes that I like to sort by tremendous is the speed rating you can find very useful players by their speed by sorting here late into the draft you know let's say I didn't pick up a backup halfback maybe I want to just pick up the fastest halfback that I can find that's a really effective way to uh, sort for players and find players in the draft rather than going you know by overall or, or or whatever it might be this is hard to sort through you know even if you go position by position it can be difficult to sort through uh, and go from the top to the bottom and find a player that you want clicking in and finding exactly what you want on their stat line instead i recommend that you sort by speed or sort by age to find the youngest player so you know maybe i'm looking for just a player that's young that has room to develop so i look for an anthony mcfarland that's only 21 years old these are really effective excuse me strategies to find players that can be effective for you long term this is how i found a lot of the players that i've drafted on this team and i'll show you guys that now some of the players that I drafted on this team were strictly based off of sorting. So late into this draft, I sorted for speed and I found John Ross, Miko Hardman. These are guys that have 95 plus speed for both of them. These are guys that are going to turn into absolute monsters for me. And I found them simply by sorting by speed. We, even when there were overall higher overall wide receivers left available for me, I sorted for guys that had star development or had the best development available and sorted for guys that had the best speed available. And these are the guys that I came across as available late in rounds. Additionally, I was able to I was able to find guys like those offensive linemen I noted that had star development. I found Dexter Lawrence pretty late. Um, you know, I found young guys at corner that are going to be effective for me, and I can develop into pretty good starting corners by just so simply sorting by age and sorting by development. That is one of the most effective ways to find players that will be effective for you and fill in some of those gaps. It'll be extremely effective for you once you get on past like round 20 because the decision become less clear at that point as to who's good and who's not you know you have to sort through find who's older who's younger who has what development using the sorting tool to your advantage can be extremely extremely useful and that can set you apart and give you an edge compared to the people that you're going up against if you're going up against users and it's really going to give you the edge against cpu teams especially so hopefully these five tips help you guys out in some way just to do a quick recap make sure you guys are drafting players that you know you can use players that you are familiar with make sure that you guys are prioritizing positions of impact and kind of waiting on positions that aren't
aren't impactful, like potentially safeties uh, or, or whatever position you might deem to be not impactful. So for me personally, I don't need to have a phenomenal safety to be good for my defense to be to be run successfully. So that's a position that I wait on. Number three, draft better players at certain positions and change them to your position of need rather than drafting a player at your position of need that might be worse. So for example, we drafted Jenkins here and moved him from left guard to left tackle because that's going to serve us better than drafting a, a crappy left tackle. Uh, tip number four, don't be afraid to draft trade chips, especially once you have a full lineup set like this. Don't be afraid to draft that trade chip. Noah Fant, uh, Julian Love, plenty of guys on this team I could consider to be a trade chip. Uh, players that I draft to uh, kind of handcuff other teams because if they failed to draft a player at a certain position, they're going to be on the lookout for one and it can be hard to trade. So having those trade chips can be to your advantage. And then the last one, make sure you guys use the sorting tools to your advantage because that is going to help you guys out tremendously. It's going to speed up your draft process and it's going to help you guys uh, uh, stress a little bit less over who you're actually picking because you're going to be able to see very quickly, you know, who's the youngest player, who has the best speed, maybe who has the best strength, any of these traits you can sort by, and it's really, really effective. So hopefully this helps you guys out. If it does, make sure you guys leave a like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel if you're new. I'll see you guys in the next video. Hope you guys have a good night. See ya.